Hello YouTubers and fellow hams. Sitting here on the bench, I have a OGE PS 30 SWB switching power supply. 30 amp switching power supply. Now this was gifted to me as dead and uh, I've been sort of poking away at it and I think I figured things out and I thought this would make an interesting video for you guys. Um, it helps when you're dealing with a power supply that's dead, well in this case not completely dead. Uh, if I turned it on, I'm not going to now because it's all disassembled, the display would come on um, and the display read 45 amps, as if there were 45 amps of current being drawn and zero volts. Well, there was actually no real load. Um, there's no output. So the display comes on, there's no output, it thinks there's 45 amps of current and zero volts at the output neither of which is true. So it, it helps with a power supply that has uh, been failed, and I, I said it that way on purpose, to know a little of the history, um, or if you can find out exactly what happened at the point when it failed, um, that can be helpful too. And I do know that. I'm not going to say any names. You know, somebody made a mistake, and, and people make mistakes. Um, somebody was using this to top off a nearly dead battery on their car, which in and of itself is not that bad of an idea, you know, it, it's definitely capable of dumping some current into the battery and uh, giving it some charge. The problem is he forgot he had it hooked up and he went to start his car. And that was all she wrote for the power supply. Uh, <laughs> so what happened? Well, um, when you, your car starter can draw a lot of current. 100 more amp, 100 or more amps, maybe even 200 or more. You know, a, a car starting battery is is rated in cold cranking amps, and you can get a battery that's rated at 400 cold cranking amps, meaning the battery can deliver 400 amps in the cold. Um, but starter motors can draw 100, maybe even more, maybe 200 amps. So when he went to start his car, uh, this power supply saw a load draw of 100 or more amps. Now you would think that just blow a fuse. Well, this is fused only on the AC input. The output is not fused. And uh, that's kind of surprising, a little surprising to me, but not uncommon in modern day power supplies. So back on the AC socket, in there there's a fuse for the AC side. But the output section here goes now the output section over here goes directly to the terminals, right from the PC board. There's no fuse on the board. So what happened? Well, when the uh, car starter hit it with that load, the power supply would shut down under a short condition, but it has big filter capacitors on it. So those filter capacitors, they can dump all their current at once in a huge current spike. To illustrate what I'm talking about, I've got a 32,000 microfarad cap here. and I'm going to do a little quick charge with my uh, bench supply and it's charged. Okay, this is charged up to 14 volts. Okay, make sure that uh, I'm in frame. Yeah, this is charged to 14 volts. 14 volts. I can put my fingers on there. I feel nothing, right, because it's only 14 volts. But if I short that with this lead you see that? <laughs> Let's see if we can get a more dramatic spark out of it. That capacitor can dump all of its charge at once in a massive current spike. That was a good one. In fact, that even tack welded that resistor's lead on there. See that? <laughs> that was tack welded to the contacts. Um, so what happened in this power supply is when uh, he went to start his car, it drew a massive amount of current through the output section of this power supply from those filter capacitors. And that led to the failure. Let me reposition the camera and I will show you what I found. Okay, we're looking at the back of the PC board in the output section, right? That's why these are such huge pads here. 
this is where all the currents flow in. Uh, these are your uh, wires going up here to the front panel, and these are capacitors, and, and you know, this is where it's all happening. And right there, I don't know if you can see that that I'm pointing to. See that crack right there? This is the uh, positive side. So what happened is those capacitors dumped their charge through to that output, and it burned this trace through with enough force and heat to boil away the solder right there. So this trace is burned through on the output. And uh, get my uh, meter in here. Okay, continuity. So on one side to the other. Nope, that was just a capacitor charge. I'm seeing about uh, 540 ohms, where we should see continuity. See that? We're not getting continuity. I'm just seeing the capacitor charging up from the probes. So what happened is we burned right through that trace there. So to fix it, well, I could just reheat them, reflow the solder across there, but I want to uh, I want to reinforce that a little bit because there used to be a nice fat PC board trace below there. So I'm going to make a make a little flat piece of copper to uh, melt into that solder and uh, repair that trace with. So let me get that set up and I'll turn the camera back on. Okay, so in order to patch this thing, I took some copper wire, heavy copper wire, and I hammered out a piece of it to make a nice, thin, flat piece of copper that will fit right in there like so to patch that trace. So all I got to do is get that sucker lined up nice and straight and get in here with a nice hot soldering iron and just solder that thing right in place. And to get plenty of heat to do it with I've got my Radio Shack butane iron which I can turn the heat up on it really well because we'll need a fair amount of heat. I also need to be very careful and just hold that thing in place with the iron while I apply some solder and that should melt right through and it's doing so. And we'll just There we go. There we go. Look at that. That should do it. Now we've got our uh, our uh, piece of copper soldered in there to bridge that. You know, I might retouch this side up here too just to get it nice and clean and solid, but that's going to carry plenty of current, so that's going to repair our uh, our damaged connection. So I'm just going to retouch this part up here and then we'll put the whole thing back together and we'll see if that fixes the problem. I am so confident that that was the problem that I went ahead and put the whole thing back together and I almost never do this. I usually test things before I get it all reassembled but you know that was so obvious it's got to be it. <clears throat> I bet you that this thing's going to give us its full output. So I got the AC line plugged in. I have not turned it on yet. I figured if uh, <clears throat> it dramatically goes kaboom, hey, it'll make interesting video. So here we go. All right, well, the fan that he's mounted on the back of it is making a little noise. I'll have to address that, but 13.5 volts. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Let's verify that. Get the fluke in here. There, can you see that? Yeah, you can see that. All right. So we'll probe it. Yeah, I got to do something about that fan. 
13.47. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty close. What are you doing back here? Okay. I'm going to figure out what's going on with that fan, and then we'll load test it. Because that's annoying me. Sounds like it's hitting a wire. Be right back. Okay, fan's much quieter now. I just had to shim it slightly. It was This is a, a, not the uh, default or factory fan that was on here. Somebody added this one. And they had it flush right up against the back of the case, and the blades were just, just grazing the case. So I shimmed it a bit, and that took care of that. All right, I'm going to put some resistance on the back of this thing. We should be able to draw about 6 amps or so. Now 3.2 amps. Voltage did not falter. I wish I had a real uh, uh, power dummy load to play with, but uh, yeah, it's going to be fine. That was such an obvious failure that uh, I think we're just uh, we're just fine now. This is a switching power supply, and uh, those are generally pretty noisy when you're on HF. But this one's made to be used with radio. And uh, what they give you right here is a noise offset, this control here. Now what that does is that shifts the oscillator frequency in the switching supply so I can change its frequency. So uh, they do have some filtering to quiet it down a bit, but if you happen to be on a spot in the band where this is casting off some noise to you, by turning that control, you'll shift its oscillator frequency and the noise will shift with it so you can tune the power supply around the area of the band that you're operating if it's, in, if it's interfering, um, which it probably only casts birdies off in a few spots across the HF spectrum, but that's the, uh, the solution on the switching supply for a radio. Uh, tune the supply to move its noise away from your radio. Anywho, um, there we go. It was completely, uh, completely shot, and now it's working, and we got a good power supply. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.